Hello fellow YouTubers. This is my attempt at trying a video blog. I am now working on my project at home where we have an acre on the lake and I'm trying to go all native. This is the best I can considering. When we first moved here three years ago, we had a lot of Japanese honeysuckle, uh, multiflorosa, we had a lot of tree of heaven, we had a lot of um, mimosa trees and a lot of um, princess trees. And we still have a lot of invasives, but we're cutting them out slowly and surely. So I live kind of in a, I live close enough to the city, but far enough from the city to feel like I'm in the country, which I love. Um, this is my house behind me. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. It's my house behind me. It's on a country road. And we've started working on the yard and um so far what we've done so far really is just pull natives uh, non-natives i meant to say and as we pull non-natives some natives have grown back to my surprise um and so we've also we've also planted some natives for instance i'm pretty sure this right here is yellow crown beard which popped up out of nowhere um i think this is I'm not sure, but I think this is um, Lady's Thumb, which I'm trying to get up. But sometimes I have to pull this stuff up blade by blade. And um, it, it can be daunting. Pretty sure this is White Crown Beard. Let's see, right here. Some of these things just popped up. I do leave the pokeweed in. I let that stay for the wild animals. I have some elderberry that's popping up, which I pray it's black elderberry. I'm not sure what this is, but I'm pretty sure it's native, but I ain't touching it. <laughs> that looks painful. Can you see it? I think that's some kind of stinging nettle. I don't know, but look at this. Here we've got some Japanese honeysuckle and uh, the stinging nettle. So it's been a project. We've been working on it for about two and a half years now, really. We moved here three years ago. I didn't start going native until I found I had a patch of pawpaw trees, which I'm about to show you in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this Japanese honeysuckle out. I can't stand this stuff. Japanese honeysuckle. Um, here we've got some ragweed. Fine, huh? No, neighbors are a little mad at me about that one. I'm trying to get it up as fast as I can. Another crown beard. And uh, in there I can see some box elder and some elderberry. I am actually letting the triple vine grow up. Everybody's like, what are you doing? Why are you saving the triple vine? Well, it's native. It's great for soil erosion. And the birds and the bees and the pollinators love it. So the goal is eventually to have a fence of triple vine going up and down this road and a fence of cross vine, which I have a lot of, which I'm excited about that. That was already here. And as you can see, Virginia creeper is already here too. So there's some triple vine and there's Virginia creeper. A lot of exciting stuff going on in this yard. I'll pull this Japanese honeysuckle up. So it's time for me to weed eat, obviously, because as you can see, there's some invasive grass in here, but I'm gonna get to it. It's one day at a time, sweet Jesus. There's the triple vine. I hope you can see it. Triple vine, I'm letting it grow. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Oh, I just fell. <laughs> um, so I'm keeping the triple vine because I think it's gonna be great when it grows up on the fence. So you can imagine how daunting this can be as I have to come and basically sometimes pull blade by blade because I don't really want to take a lawnmower. This is something native. A lot of people don't know about it. They think it's a weed. I forget what it's called, but I know it's native. I don't know if you can see that. It's underneath here. Something native I'm keeping. It helps with soil erosion and it's good for the birds and the pollinators, so I'm keeping it. Down here I've got Pretty sure that's a walnut tree growing right there. I can't be 100% positive. There's a 
white oak growing right there, which I want to keep that. And uh, box elder. Now during the spring, there's a lot of Jack in the pulpit growing down here. So, and that was already here. I didn't plant it. As you can see, there's a bunch of Virginia creeper and this is some kind of, I forget what it's called. It's a peanut something. It's a, it's native. So I'm keeping that. And uh, as a gift from God, we have a dogwood tree over here that I did not plant right here, which looks beautiful right now. We've been just not cutting it down and letting it grow on its own. You see, there's the other part of it. I'm really excited about that. We've got a lot of hackberries and sugar berries growing in the yard, which I want because they're super awesome for the birds. So, so far, there's some poison ivy. I actually, believe it or not, keep some of the poison ivy, depending on where it is. This particular poison ivy, I think I'm gonna pull out. But if it's in a place that it's not very much traveled, I'll keep it. You know why? It's good for the, it's good for the critters, the birds and the bees and the pollinators. And we want to feed them. We don't want to take away their food. Um, here's some white crown beard. I don't know if you can see that. I'm doing something wrong. Here we go. White crown beard. And my, my pride and joy here is a, right here I have a patch of pawpaw trees. There's about 200 pawpaw trees here for which I am truly excited. I have planted five cultivars in hopes to grit fruit in the next couple of years. Um, so again, I'm pulling this out blade by blade. This is Japanese stilt grass. I hate this stuff. Um, and here we have another gift from God. I consider it this dogwood tree. I did not plant this. This was already here. There's all the pawpaw trees in there. I've been kind of trying to keep the woods out, out there kind of clean from poison ivy and look at all that Japanese stilt grass I gotta get up. Um, but the pawpaw trees keep going in there pretty good. So I'm, I'm hoping for fruit soon. And they just keep growing, which I'm real happy about it. Got a tulip tree growing right there. So this is what it looks like. Uh, by the way, today's date is October the 1st, 2021. I wish I had started this vlog a couple of years ago when I started all this because we've actually made progress. It might not look like it, but we've made a lot of progress. And across the street here, there's another lot that uh, somebody I know owns, but it's not developed. And there's gotta be a hundred, maybe 200 pawpaw trees in there. I didn't tag those. I did tag these. I do know we have 200 pawpaws over here, which is super exciting. All right, so we're gonna walk down into the yard now. I'm just, you know, we're limited on budget, so I'm kind of having to make this up as I go um, because I mean, they wanted to charge us $100,000 for landscaping and they didn't even want to do anything I wanted to do. So I decided no. I said, I'll just go out there every day and do a little something. Yes, it's hard work, but it's worth it. it you get a feeling of accomplishment, you stay healthy and strong and you're getting things done, you know, and I'm doing what I want in the yard, not what the landscaper suggest. So, and there's a lot of work to be done. There's some yellow, crown beard over there. Here's some another view of the pawpaw trees. On both sides of me, there's nobody, there's nobody living except for one acre over somebody's building right now, which is kind of, you know, it, you know how that goes. Um, here I have some more pawpaw trees, which aren't looking so great because I think we had some, we had a drought a little bit in the beginning of summer. And so I think some of them got hurt a little bit, but I think they're going to bounce back fine. This right here is um, rich weed is the common name for it. Of course, there's another name for it, but I'm keeping it because the pollinators love it. It might look like a weed to some people, but I like it. I see bees on it all the time. I see, and I know the bees and the insects are good for the birds, so I'm, I'm letting them stay. 
And in there, I don't know if you can see in there, I planted a sweet shrub or was it an allspice? One of the two. It's not doing so well. I think it might bounce back, hopefully. Here is the um, maypoth, I think it's called. I forget what it's called. But anyway, we get these every year covered all over the yard. This is it going into winter. Um, let's see, more papas here. Oh, look at this, an elm tree, American elm tree. And here, I did plant this. This is um, a red osier dogwood. I pray it's native. They said it was native. So I'm hoping it does well. It seems to be doing pretty good. Let's see if I can show it to you. There you go. Red osier. I'm still new to the video vlog, so I'm sorry. Um, more pawpaws. What here? What I have here, I think, is um, a persimmon tree. I think it's all over the yard, and so I'm waiting to see if it's going to do anything. There's several of them. I don't think it's invasive because every year the leaves fall off and it goes into the ground, and every year it comes back. Let's see if you can see that, yeah. And it's not growing or spreading. I have some grapevine. I hope it's an, a, a native grapevine that I put up on this trellis that I made up that my husband doesn't care for too much. <laughs> Another grapevine here growing. I'm not sure exactly what kind of grapevine it is, but we'll see. Oh, the beloved goldenrod growing in the yard here. It's all flopped over. I'm trying to figure that out. I heard there's something called flop over because normally these species grow real thick in the, in, the na in the native habitat. And I think this goldenrod, I don't remember throwing seeds in the front yard, but I may have. I did throw seeds in the backyard, lots of them, of goldenrod. So I'm not sure if this is from the seeds I threw or not, but they've all flopped over, all of them. So I'm hoping next year they'll grow back thicker and stand up, is my hope. And of course, I told you I was keeping the ragweed, not ragweed, I'm sorry, um, the salad, poke salad. And this is aster, but I'm still waiting on it to bloom. <laughs> oh my, I thought this aster was going to be prettier. Actually, that must have thrown seeds out here. I don't remember doing it. But I guess I did, because this wasn't here last year. I honestly think that as we pull the, na the non-natives, some of the natives pop up. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a possibility, I guess. Um, here we go. We got a giant, man, giant elderberry standing here. Giant elderberry. It's gotten big. I just, the elderberry sucker. So they'll pop up and keep popping up. I tried to pull a few up. I decided to keep this one to see, cause I know elderberry is really good. I know it's really good for the birds. So I want to keep some elderberry, but I got to keep it under control too. Um, oh, I got a, um, I think it's an elm tree here. Right here I have some kind of nut tree. I'm not sure what kind. I think it's either a bitter nut or a butternut. Right here I have, I think, a maple, a maple tree, sugar maple. Lots and lots of cross vine growing up the trees, which is awesome because in the spring, it, it blooms these most beautiful um, tulip-shaped flowers that the hummingbirds love. So next spring, the hummingbirds will have a feast because I'm letting that grow on every tree. Just kind of walking through the yard here. I got a bunch of ferns growing everywhere. They were a gift from God. I didn't plant them. They just grew there. I'm really excited about them. Um, the things I get excited over. I get very excited over this nature stuff and the natives and the wildflowers and all the things. So I did plant this red bud here. It's not looking too good, is it? I think it's from the heat in the summertime, but I'm hoping that's gonna perk up. Over here is another red bud we planted. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, here's some aster blooming. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful aster blooming. I just need to keep it in a, um, need to try to keep it in a, um, 
I guess a bush like shape. So in the spring, I'm going to go through and I guess try to shape it all up, cut it down a little bit, and hopefully it'll bloom back better. Anyway, that's what I read. Believe me, I'm winging this as I go. I have no clue what I'm doing, but just reading online and doing what I can. There's cross vine all over the ground here. I'm letting it grow. I like cross vine. I think it's beautiful. I love the flowers it makes. So I'm letting it grow. Ginger, we've got some ginger popping up. It's everywhere. This was already here when we moved here. All the ginger that you see, I have not planted any ginger. And there's tons of ginger in the yard. Virginia creeper, that's everywhere. I'm letting it grow. Um, Song of Solomon. Got lots of Song of Solomon. It's about to go into winter though, so it's not looking great. But when it, in the spring, it's beautiful. More fern, another ironwood. Got a bunch of ironwoods or sugar maple, I mean, hackberries, I think they're called. Another fern. I did plant this, this is foam flower. I was hoping to use it for a ground cover. I think it's doing a pretty good job with ground cover. What do you guys think? It's spreading, it's spreading well. It was much, much smaller when I put it there. There's some more Solomon. I'm not sure what brand that is. It's Song of Solomon or Leathery Solomon or False Sol Solomon Seal. I don't know, but it's, I'm keeping it because it's native. Uh, this is, I think, American Lopseed. And while it's not very attractive, it is native. And I do see bugs on it, so I've been keeping that. More rich weed. Right here I have a sugar maple. And right here I have what I think, and I could be wrong, but I'm almost, I'm at least 75% sure this is an American elm. So we will see. This was already here when we got here. I've done the, you know, I've pulled the, the stems and the looked at the buds and pulled the flowers and looked at them and compared them. I'm pretty sure it's an American elm. However, being a novice, I could be wrong. We'll find out. I love it. I'm not cutting it down because I don't think it's invasive because I don't see little suckers everywhere. So I'm keeping it. That's the sugar maple right there. This is the uphill to, I'm going into the backyard now. All right, so here we go. Some more false, I think this is false Solomon. It's either false Solomon or leathery Solomon. I never know. Look at the ginger growing everywhere. It's already here, praise God. I think this is a rusty black haw. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I think it's a rusty black haw. Ginger growing everywhere. Um, that may be a mulberry, if, it, if it's white or whatever. If it's not red, I'm pulling it. I only want red mulberries. They're hibernized, so it's kind of hard to tell. So I'm waiting to see if I get fruit. Look at all the ginger. It's so beautiful. All that ginger is a gift from God. All that ginger just grew, grew, just grew here. I didn't plant it. I'm really excited about that. More pawpaws. Love the pawpaw trees. I suspect this is maybe an American elm. I'm waiting to find out before I cut it. Oh, check this out. We got a dogwood right here. I'm trying to keep it going just by pulling any Japanese honeysuckle that might be trying to suck the life out of it. I can't stand Japanese honeysuckle. Here we have some more pawpaws and another fern. And right here we have a giant white oak, which I love that white oak. It's huge. So, love the white oak. We want more white oaks, more white oaks. We love white oaks. Um, this is the backyard and yes, it looks a little chaotic to me too, but I think it's gonna come together because we've been pulling non-native invasives mostly and not planting still. So we still plant a few things, but not as much as we pull because I'm hoping by pulling, like I said earlier, then 
na the natives will come. There's a sugar maple over there. There's a hackberry over there. More ginger, more ginger, more ginger. Like I said, this ginger, I did not plant. I think that might be a persimmon, I'm not sure, but can you see, I hope you can see all, uh, look at that, it's a new patch of ginger that never used to be there. That's brand new. As a gift from God. Well, check me, honey, suck, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. Can't stand that stuff. So, it's definitely a work in progress, um, and I still have a lot of work to do. And I just took you through the one quarter of the yard so far. I'm stuck around this thing. Here we have a bunch of goldenrod. It keeps flopping over. If anybody has any suggestions to prevent the floppiness, I'd, I'd gladly take your input on that because it just flops over. Look right here, we got a tulip tree growing right there. Tulip tree, I'm gonna let it grow. Yep, bunch of cross vine growing here. You can tell I've been picking out this Japanese stilt grass out of here. Cross vine, fern. That looks painful. Beautiful fern growing on there. Cross vine. Now we're coming up on one of my favorite parts of the garden and it isn't the great time to take a video of it, but this right here is Indian pink. And I'll come back in the spring and take some pictures of it and some videos of it. But it has grown since we moved here. There used to just be one or two or three here. And now there's a big old patch of it right here. And big old patch of it right there. Loving the Indian pink. And there is some Solomon seal. I think that's real Solomon seal. I'm not sure. Right there. A little elderberry there. So here's a big old patch of Solomon seal. Now, this doesn't look great right now because. We're going into winter but it just started looking bad just recently in the summer and if my dogs would stop walking and it would look a lot better too but in the summertime it's like a big old bed of plush leaves no wonder the dogs like to lay in it um, and it's gorgeous it's and next spring i'll come back and take some videos of it and show it to you this was already here i didn't plant any of this thank you god and it goes all the way out there. So I love this. I'm going to try to do everything I can to protect it. Um, here's another Indian pink. Can you see it? Another big Indian pink growing right here. And I'm trying to keep people from stepping on it. Bunch of ginger. Fern. Maple trees. Sugar maples, sugar maples. Oh, that tree right there is an Ohio buckeye or some kind of buckeye. For some reason, they lost their leaves real early this year. All right, here we go. I did plant this. I wanted to, I wanted to try black gum, so we'll see how it goes. A lot of things I planted didn't do so good. I'm learning it's all about where you plant it. It's very important. I'm figuring out. So, big old fern. I didn't plant that. Cross vines going up every tree. Now, at this point, this video has gotten pretty lengthy, and I apologize. How about I come back to you another time and show you the rest? I'm going to go ahead and um, sign out for now, but I'm excited to start these video blogs to show everybody the progress that we'll be making. At, while we're trying to develop a native environment. I'm just gonna give you a broad overview of the yard for now. So this is, I'm in the backyard. This is the back of the house. And 
that's a big old slanted hill and it's very hard to work on which is probably one of the reasons why it looks really nasty right now because <laughs> it's hard to work on but i'm gonna go ahead and let it grow this year and next year i think i'm going to um go through it and shape up everything the one thing i am concerned about which i would love some feedback on if anybody cares to give me some constructive input I welcome it I think of it as an opportunity to learn and we can all learn something more life is about learning you know when I stop learning I might as well just stop breathing because every day is a lesson and every day is a good time to give glory to God so down here you'll see the lake one thing I am concerned about is the erosion that's going on here which is really one of the major factors that I'm working on. Um, I need to prevent the erosion. It's having some significant, you can see the divot in the ground there. So what I've been planting here, I have been planting things here because I think it's important that we prevent this erosion. I've been planting elderberries. Elderberries, I've got a, um, hopefully I don't fall going down this hill. It's so steep. Um, I did plant, I, I don't know how to say it, but that's a catapulla, I think it's called. I did plant that. I don't know if you can see that catapulla. But anyway, I planted that, and then I planted some elderberries. I just stuck some sticks in the ground of elderberry, some spikes. In here, there's a, um, see, the, there's the elderberry right there. And uh, some ginger here. I'm trying to prevent erosion here, so if anybody's got any ideas, I did plant some mully grass. And I am planting some different species of grass here. I've got some orange jewel weed over here. I do have to show you that before we leave. But you can see that it's eroding here. And it's eroding pretty quickly. So I planted that dogwood there last weekend because I'm trying to prevent it from getting worse. This is a silky dogwood that I planted. Can you see it? That's hard for me to see if you can see it. Silky dogwood planted that here because of this erosion that's going on and I, I don't I don't like the erosion it concerns me oh look at this what is this privet privet is one of the most common non-native invasive species in Tennessee if not the US so if you see privet pull it please we don't want no privet it's bad I wanted to show you this one thing and then I'm gonna sign off and I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I'm really excited about doing this. I think it's important that we all try to be more conscious about what we plant um, because the decisions you make today will affect our children for years to come. So try to not plant invasive species. Right here I have some orange jewelweed, which I love. I love orange jewelweed. And it's super, super valuable for the um, wildlife. It spits seeds at you when you pull on it, which I love that. So I come out here and pull on it every now and then. So it'll throw some seeds so I can have some more orange jewelweed. Love orange jewelweed. Look at it spitting seeds. That's great. I want as many seeds as I can get so we can um, have this very important the, the pollinators love jewelweed. Pollinators love jewelweed. So if you, you'd, you're better to have a little bit of jewelweed than to not have any because it's super awesome for the pollinators. Well, I want to thank you all for joining me today. You, now I've given you, a, I guess, an overall so far of what's been going on. I'm hoping we can get together again and do this again because I'm really excited about it. The Lord put it on my heart and I believe that God's going to bless my hands and the work of my hands and it's going to bring glory to God and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share it with you. It's a beautiful day here in East Tennessee. Love it here. I'm from New Orleans but I love it here. Um, I hope you all have a blessed day and thank you for joining me. Looking forward to the next time. Bye.